Next up, we have Wish Cash. This earthquake causing catfish with origins in Japanese mythology was first encountered by trainers in Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald, whether it was through evolving their Barboche or facing the mighty Wallace. In the original Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, Wish Cash was the wise town elder who lived in its own pool and told everyone its knowledge of the Nine Tails legend. Today, we'll see if Wish Cash's wisdom was well worthwhile in the competitive scene or if using it would not be very Wish Cash money of you. And so we ask, how good was Wish Cash actually? And in this video, we'll be going over these competitive formats. Wish Cash packed promise in its debut generation. Water Ground is great defensive typing with solid offensive stabs to boot, and it packed a massive HP stat of base 110. However, it had some trouble finding its footing. There was no way it was going to find any use in the Swampert dominated OU metagame, and it couldn't find any use in UU either, with how effective Quagsire was there. However, in NU, there was no more Water Ground competition, and Wish Cash was able to establish a niche for itself. It did have tough competition for the role of defensive water type with Web Lord, who was one of the best overall Pokemon on the tier, and whose lack of a quadruple weakness to Hidden Power Grass let it take on other metagame staples such as Flareon. However, Wish Cash's part ground typing bestowed upon it a bevy of unique boons. Its rock resistance let it easily take on rock slides from Choice Band, Pseudo Woodle, and Relicamp, while Dragon Dance Pupitar couldn't easily rock slide flinch into Earthquake range. Wish Cash's electric immunity was also invaluable, as it allowed Wish Cash to answer Pikachu and Haunter. Wish Cash was quite physically bulky with investment which was crucial for shrugging off earthquakes from plus one pupitar as well as choice band matang and relicamp but that wasn't all it could even tank several other powerful neutral stab attacks as well especially if using protect when squeezing out every bit of leftovers recovery possible wish cash could even take on monstrous attacks like sky uppercut and drill peck from choice banded variants of hitmonchan and murkrow it wasn't supposed to be a team's only stopgap to those monsters but it was excellent at fortifying the integrity of its defensive core and filling in as a temporary stopgap to prevent these threats from claiming a kill mid-game, allowing its trainer to regain momentum and turn the game around. Wish Cast wasn't just a great defensive Pokemon either. Though it was no longer to switch into opposing attacks with such relative impunity, it also had quite the offensive set that was one of the biggest threats to stall teams. With Substitute, it shielded itself from the ever-present Toxic, and its massive HP stat allowed it to create bulky subs that were unbroken in a single hit by Seismic Toss. Once behind this easily summoned sub, Wish Cast was able to dish out its powerful stab moves, which cleared through most stall stables like Mawile, Roselia, and Flareon, while its last move slot allowed it to harass its few checks. Ice Beam was instantly threatening to Tangula, while Toxic was still ruinous to it and also helped Wish Cash beat Blossom, Dugong, and Wailord. Wish Cash was a reliable, effective Pokemon on both offense and defense, and while its low speed and severe grass weakness held it back from true dominance, it was still an excellent Pokemon in Generation 3 and you. The arrival of Gastrodon ensured Wish Cash's time as a defensive NU Pokemon was over. However, that was just fine, as its offensive set received an absolutely excellent buff in the form of Dragon Dance, which turned it into one of NU's premier setup Pokemon. The addition of Life Orb was also massively useful, helping compensate for Wish Cash's rather meager base 78 attack stat. After one turn of setup, Wish Cash was well poised to run through significant portions of NU teams. It was a physical attacker who hit the tier's three most prominent physical walls, Regirock, Gligar, and Sandslash, super effectively with Stab. Once boosted, Wish Cash's Stab Earthquake was a powerful general attack, ripping through many of the tier's other bulky staples such as Slowking, Hypno, and Licky Licky. Waterfall was useful secondary stab, as after a boost, it easily crushed the tier's popular Earthquake immunities such as Charizard, Haunter, Dodrio, and Drift Blim, as well as the aforementioned Gligar. non cradily grass types resisted both moves, but the likes of Meganium and Cacturn were hardly safe from a boosted bounce which also crushed Vileplume. With the plethora of choice Thunderbolts from the likes of Manetric, Magneton, Magmortar, Haunter, and Gardevoir, Wish Cash was consistently able to find a turn to safely set up. Of course, while Wish Cash was a legitimate threat and held a unique place in the tier, it had its flaws. While there were plenty of choice Thunderbolts around, Wish Cash didn't set up safely on much else. It needed the extra power of Life Orb too badly to afford the status protection of Lumberry, and it didn't exactly take even weak neutral hits too well without bulk investment or less 
leftovers, especially since it would be taking life orb recoils afterwards. These factors also made it quite easy for every Scarfer in the tier to finish off, and thanks to Wish Cash's low speed, it got outsped by all of them. Finally, even when boosted by Dragon Dance and Life Orb, Wish Cash's power often left something to be desired. It couldn't even KO a Regirock without any defense investment after Stealth Rock. In essence, Wish Cash had trouble bringing it home. It rarely executed a full sweep. However, when Wish Cash's flaws were compensated for in the team builder and battle, it was able to demonstrate the good traits it brought to a team. Most notably was its ability to put Scarfers in awkward positions. Yes, it was revenge killed by them after taking a hit, but it also set up on those locked into Thunderbolt, thus forcing the opponent to switch out and sacrifice something as Wish Cash danced. The Scarfer would likely then be able to KO Wish Cash, allowing it to grab a 2 for 1 trade that would let its trainer close out the game. It was also able to more effectively grab KOs when its lack of power was compensated for with spikes. In short, Wish Cash would rarely full sweep a team, but when used correctly, it was quite reliable at breaking devastating holes in the opposing team. As a result, it had a unique, well-deserved place in Generation 4 and New. It wasn't the easiest to use and get results with, but it was quite rewarding for the trainers who made the efforts to best utilize its talents. Wish Cash received hydration from Generation 5's Dream World, but it stood no chance at breaking into the Rain Drenched OU tier. It was outclassed as a Dragon Dance Hydration Sweeper by Lapras, who was already incredibly gimmicky. Sadly, Wish Cash didn't get anything else of worth, and as such, Enu left it in the dust this time around. The tier was stronger, faster, and bulkier. Wish Cash could hardly keep up when it was getting slammed for huge damage at every corner, and failing to leave any sort of dent on the opposition. Some players tried to experiment with the substitute Dragon Dance set that would take advantage of the passivity of the tier's number one physical wall, Aloma Mola. But the fact that that set required so many bulky Vs and leftovers as the item meant Wish Cash was even weaker and slower than it normally would be. Sure, it'd be Aloma Mola, but it would lose to pretty much everything else. If Wish Cash had been able to somehow grab multiple consecutive free turns with which it could boost, then yeah, it would have been good. But the problem was that it could not force such situation. It had to hope that the opponent would slip up and give such a turn away by mistake. Relying on the opponent being caught off guard and leaving a Loma Mola in to give Wish Cash a free substitute was not a strategy any reputable player wanted to bank on, and thus Wish Cash saw no usage at all. It was completely unviable and fittingly dropped to untiered as a result. Generation 6 brought Mega Evolutions and Ruby and Sapphire remakes, and who better to receive one than a down on its luck Hoenn Pokemon that could really use a competitive boost? Yes, that's right, noted Gen 3 underdog slash generally terrible Pokemon such as Salamence and Metagross received Mega Evolutions come Oras, while famed metagame crushers such as Wish Cash had to be kept in check and did not receive any such buffs. The only improvement Wish Cash got in Generation 6 was the newfound existence of PU, the new lowest tier below. And you. However, this addition was a generation too late, as Wish Cash was completely unable to establish even the slightest semblance of a niche in the tier. It wasn't able to set up safely anywhere at all, and the popularity and power of the plethora of grass types in the tier, most of them packing Eviolite, with the exception being the physically defensive monster Leafeon, meant Wish Cash didn't get very far even after a boost. One was better off using Fracture to sweep with Dragon Dance, because yeah, it's always a great feeling when you're not just countered by not fully evolved Pokemon, but outclassed by them too. Wish Cash tumbled past these Pokemon and found itself swimming in the murky, usage-less depths of untiered once again. There was no way Wish Cash could handle Generation 7's PU. The metagame had already been far too much for it before, and this time around the tier resembled a previous iteration of RU, while Wish Cash had received a grand total of zero buffs in the generational shift. It set up nowhere and did no damage. Even power boosts from Z moves couldn't help it. Z moves were great, but they didn't magically turn bad Pokemon into good or even usable ones. In fact, Wish Cash was usually going to be a waste of a Z crystal, just like it was going to be a waste of a team slot. As such, it was not surprising to to the three people that thought of Wish Cash in Generation 7 that the fish wound up untiered for the third generation in a row. As far as unviable Pokemon go, Wish Cash doesn't exactly need a complete overhaul to become viable in PU. A simple stat boost would go a long way. Maybe access to Stealth Rock too. You know, reasonable requests. Sadly, Game Freak doesn't deal in those. From the looks of it, they're too busy with their work in the field of keeping Wish Cash unviable. Maybe they're afraid Wish Cash will want a cut of their action if it starts seeing usage, given its name. Who knows, there are many theories attempting to diagnose the origin of Game Freak's allergy to good, simple ideas. Funnily enough, Wish Cash wasn't always 
way is completely unusable in generation 8. In the early limited deck stages of PU, it had a small, small niche with a physically defensive set. With Rocky Helmet, it could punish physical moves, and it was tanky enough to handle threats like Stone Jorner and Mawile, while it stayed healthy with rest and sleep talk. It was just barely viable at all, as it competed with the more splashable Palpatone and its stealth rock and water absorb, but it was at least something. That something was quickly made obsolete by the DLC, but at least it wasn't taken away entirely. Of course, this meant it was back at the same old story for Wish Cash in Generation 8. It was too weak, too slow, and while it wasn't exactly frail, it certainly wasn't tanky enough to make up for how badly those other two flaws held it back. As such, it unsurprisingly dropped to untiered for the fourth time, as it was once again completely unviable even all the way in PU. And that's it, so how good was Wish Cash actually? Well, it was actually quite a decent NU Pokemon in its first two generations. It wasn't a metagame defining Pokemon with great ease of use, but it was great at rewarding heads up team building and play from the enterprising trainers who saw and were willing to get something out of its potential. As such, it had a unique and solid niche. Sadly, starting with generation five, that all went out the window, with Wish Cash sitting firmly among the worst Pokemon in the game ever since. Granted, its inherent traits meant it was one of the best Pokemon of those that were totally unviable. That is, it was close to not being unviable if it got a few boosts. Sadly, those boosts never came, and Wish Cash's only competitive appearances since Generation 4 has been a blink and you'll miss it tiny niche in a brief stage of Generation 8 PU. Hopefully, it will receive a little more attention from Game Freak in the future. Thanks for watching, everyone. And as always, if you like the video and you want to see more, be sure to subscribe to False White Gaming for more weekly Pokemon content. And in the comments, I want to know, what do you think about competitive Wish Cash? How would you buff it? Whatever it is, let me know in the comments. Also, thank you so much to our patrons for continued support of our videos. And and thank you to everyone else watching as well. And follow my crew on these social media platforms. And that's all I got. See you next time, everyone.